In this video, I just want to introduce the Double Exposure project that we're working on in Photoshop. So this is an, the image on the screen is an example of the finished double exposure image, where basically I'm combining the image of the sunset with the close-up shot of a hand, where I'm adding a vignette in the background, doing some blend modes. Um, I think it was multiply, the multiply blend mode for the hand. And essentially, this image is a combination of a close-up shot of a hand and a sunset. So essentially, what we're going to be doing here is collectively masking out part of one image and then placing the other image, second image for the total exposure, inside the masked area. So I want to go ahead and get started here and, and just kind of show you how I did this. So if you don't have the, uh, the images open in Photoshop, you're going to want to go to File, and then Open, and then just navigate your way to the file you want to open. Click on it, and then click Open. And the file is already open, so nothing really happened here. It's already open. So anyhow, um, so essentially what I want to do to get this finished blended image, I want to bring in the image of the sunset and the image of the hand together into the same file. So I'd already started with this hand image. You know, there's a couple ways I could get that photo image in here, uh, or the photo image of the um, sunset. So if I have, I, I click over to the sunset image, one way would be to select the move tool, click on the image, and drag it into the other file. Now, as soon as that file pops open, I can bring my mouse cursor over into this file. And if I hold the shift button and release the mouse, the mouse button, um, it places that image uh, it, directly in that file um, as a separate layer, and it keeps everything, uh, or it fills the, the same space, or the space um, of the original image. So, you know, these both of these pictures were taken with, a, with an iPhone, so they're the same image size, so they fit together quite well. Now, if that wasn't the case, um, you know, if you had to resize the image, um, before you do that, it's, it's a really good idea to take a couple of steps first um, before doing any further editing on the image to get to this finished product. So I'm back here. Um, what I want to do is just kind of demonstrate and talk a little bit about smart objects. So the problem with resizing images in Photoshop is that every time you resize a JPEG image, it rewrites the image. So I'm going to make a copy of this layer just to kind of show you um, some things about smart objects. Now, on the finished image, you know, I didn't really have to do a whole lot of resizing here or rotating, but you may want to. You know, this, this is kind of out of the ordinary. Uh, in most cases, when you're doing the double exposure, you will need to resize some things uh, or one image. So I'm going to go back to the file with um, both the hand and the sunset. And I just want to take some time today uh, or in this video to show you and talk about smart objects. So if I'm on this layer and I want to resize this and start moving it around and manipulating it, typically the way to do that would be to go to edit and free transform. If you notice, the shortcut is control T. So we'll click on the image. And right here, now I can start to, you know, I could rotate, rotate this. I can skew it a little bit. Maybe I did want to stretch the image out. Maybe I wanted to move it. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's the best placement on the hand. You know, maybe I wanted it going sideways, perhaps. All right, that's going to give me a very different look. And let's say I'm kind of changing it around. Well, every time I resize the image or move it or rotate it, Photoshop rewrites the image. And in particular, if I make this really small or if I go really tiny with it, and I'm not holding shift there at all, um, if I hit the enter key, that's going to finalize the transformation. But I might want to say, oh, well, I didn't actually want to make it that small. So if I press control P again to activate the transform tool and I try and resize this, 
you can see what starts to happen. It's already looking very distorted, pixelated. I've lost a lot of information. Now, it's not going to look quite as bad when I hit enter, but you can see it's still pretty bad, you know. Um, I've lost a lot of data here. So if I try and reshape it, um, again, I'm pressing Control T here. I try and, you know, get this back to around the original size. I've lost all that data, and I'm never going to get back to the quality of that original image. Okay? So working this way when you're transforming a JPEG image, it's a destructive edit. So this is not really such a great way to work. Um, so the solution to this problem is uh, is what's known as a smart object. So I'm going to click back on the original layer here to activate that. I could come up to layer and then come down to smart object and convert to smart object. And if you notice, this gives me a little icon in the corner. Um, that's indicating that this is a smart object, but I'm just going to press Control Z real quick to back up. Another way to, to do that, instead of going to layer and smart object, convert to smart object, another way to do it is just to right click on the outer portion of that layer and go to create smart object. So there's two different ways you can create a smart object. All right, so now that I've made this smart object, if I press Control T again, and I resize this. I'm going to hold shift this time. Maybe I want this really small. And maybe I was trying to figure out, okay, where do I want this on the hand? And you know, maybe I accidentally just went a little too small here. And I realized, oh no, you know, I don't want it that small. Well, if I press control T again, and I did hit enter by the way to finish that transformation. Um, so I'm holding, uh, all right, press control T and I'm going to resize this image back up to its original size. And as you can see, once I hit enter, I'm back to the, the original quality of the image. It's still a sharp image. And if we kind of go back to the sunset image here, if I click back and forth between these two, you, this is the original image. Um, there's no difference. It's the same exact image. So that's the benefit of working with a smart object. Now, some issues that you may discover when you're working with a smart object. Well, hey, maybe if I wanted to do some brushing on this layer, it's not going to let me. If I activate my brush tool and I wanted to paint, you know, this kind of, each pinkish color on top of it, it won't let me. If I click, I'm going to get a message that says the smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Um, contents will no longer be available. Rasterize the smart object. Um, so I would click cancel, all right, for that. Um, because if you still, you know, if you're all finished transforming the smart object, you can rasterize it. But essentially what a, a smart object does it remembers the original data from the unedited image so it kind of embeds the all the information of the original Im image in that file so that when you make something smaller or then you enlarge it it bases the, uh, the resized image on the original so you don't as a result you don't lose data but um, back to where I was as far as trying to paint on this. Well, if I wanted to rasterize it, I could. But as you see, it's no longer a smart object. And any brushing I do directly on this layer is a permanent destructive edit. So I'm going to press Control Z to back up. Um, I'm going to convert this back to a smart object. Again, right click on the layer, click Convert to Smart Object. Now it's a smart object. But if I wanted to edit the smart object as a smart object, I can We'll click on this and what that does Photoshop creates a new file for that smart object and now if I did want to paint on this right I'm painting on the smart object once I close this file it'll ask me if I want to save the changes yes sure and then if I click yes you can see those changes are made here on my smart object
But I'm going to go ahead and back up because I actually don't want to paint any pixels on this smart object right now. Um, all right, so we have, and let's go ahead and delete this layer. I don't really need the poor quality image. So I have my smart object layer and I have the hand layer as well underneath it, the image of the hand. Um, now, if I wanted to convert this to a smart object, sure, yes, I could just right click and convert that to a smart object as well. I'm not really going to be doing a whole lot of resizing on this, so probably not totally necessary. All right, in the next video, I'm going to just get into how to do some masking, but we're going to call it uh, quits on this video for now. Um, we're going to get into the masking in the next video and how to actually combine together, together those uh, two images. So consider it as a review to smart objects. Um, good idea to use smart objects when you're uh, resizing images or rotating them in Photoshop. Um, one last thing just to kind of point out to you. Um, you can place an image as a smart object. So if I wanted to place embedded, it's still a good file or a good uh, way to get files into your, or, you know, into or images into um, a single file. What you might want to do is just check something real quick. Go to Edit and Preferences and go to General. And you'll have some options here. You might want to just make sure that the always create smart objects when placing is checked. That way, you know, if you don't feel like clicking and dragging and open se opening separate files um, and dragging one image into the other, you can simply use the place embedded command and it'll automatically create the smart, that image as a smart object when placing it. So that's a, a good idea to keep that checked. Um, by default, it may already be checked off. Um, but not necessarily. So just kind of double check and make sure that it is clicked on um, in the future so that you can combine images or place images as smart objects. And it just takes care of uh, the extra steps that you would have to take um, to place an object or open an object uh, separately and then convert it to a smart object once it's placed. Anyhow, good idea to have this checked um, when you're placing your images together or into um, one file. You know, always create smart objects when placing. Check that, have that box checked. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so again, um, in the next video, we'll get into some of the masking techniques. So I think that's going to be about it for now for this video.